Hello, Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Zaman from AGC. Today, I would like to present a topic about motor learning and skill acquisition. Shall we begin? Yes. Okay, let me start with introduction. Motor learning focuses on assisting the child to achieve goal-directed functional actions. It may initially appear to be a skill-building approach because the focus is on the skill acquisition involvement in movement and balance. However, motor learning is an occupation-based approach because it is directed towards motor solution uh, hunt that comes from the child's interaction with the task and the environment. Uh, when a child is learning a new uh, functional task, a general movement structure is brought into place that takes into consideration the relationship involving the child's movement capabilities, environmental conditions and the action goal. When the task is done regularly, these concurrences become more refined and the goal is achieved more successfully. Now let me proceed to task char characteristics. Children with uh, motor programming problems and control problems usually struggle with establishing the functional harmonies, timing and sequencing. Task demands may vary and each of the, these depths is very relevant to the way in which tasks are learned. And these uh, task characteristics determine whether uh, what motor learning approaches are applied to enhance performance. There's four types. The first one is uh, simple complex. Uh, simple complex which is referring to example like simple task which requires a decision and which followed by a sequence response. Example of a simple task is usually reaching for object. Uh, well, complex tasks require the integration from various sources and the application of underlying rules that guide performance. Example is handwriting. Now going to the second uh, task uh, characteristic which is open closed loop. In an open closed uh, open loop task, a motor program is put into place before action begins and is not modified during the task performance. Example is like throwing ball. And in a closed loop uh, task, the child continues to monitor and respond to feedback that he or she receives uh, intrinsically from the body and extrinsically from the environment. Example is usually cutting a, sh a, sh a shape using scissors. Now I'm continuing from the previous slide which is task characteristic. The third uh, characteristic of the task is environment uh, changing and stationary. For the environment changing, the child has to learn the movement and learn to monitor the environment to adapt to changes. Example is usually like playing football or soccer. And environmental stationary is the child must monitor sensory feedback in which uh, environment is always stationary, they stay put like that, never change at all. And the fourth and final characteristic is uh, uh, task characteristics. The task uh, learning difficulty depends on the match between task presentation and learning styles. Some children usually learn best through auditory or visual, while some usually tend to prefer movement or touch. Now going to uh, discuss more about feedback. Different types of feedback contribute to the motor learning processes. Intrinsic feedback uh, occurs happens when it is produced by the child's sensory systems and is uh, inherent uh, in a task. Example include information available to the child through vision, sensation and more. And well, extrinsic feedback usually happens when it is provided to the child by an external force such as by observing the results of one's actions. Extrinsic feedback usually has two types, a knowledge of results in which a therapist provides information to the child about the relationship between the actions and the goal but only after the facts and knowledge of performance uh, in which emphasizes the prioritize the movement pattern and uh, its relationship to task achievement. Now going to the types of practice on learning and performance. Task practice is very beneficial to learning without doubt. doubt. Uh, most interventionists face the dilemma of whether to practice the whole task or parts of the task. Researchers showed that the benefits of practicing either the whole task, keseluruhan, or uh, separuh daripada itu, the part of the task, depends on the task's inherent goals. If the timing of the task parts is very important, then practice the whole task. If the task has very distinct parts, uh, most uh, important parts, uh, then practice the task punya parts in uh, that can be performed in a serial manner. So choose the very important part. Now continuing from the previous slide, which is still the same topic, types of practice on learning and performances. Another important study in practice uh, in session planning is the use of random versus block practice. 
for random practi- uh, for random the environmental conditions uh, vary changes slightly each time and uh, for a block it involves um, the drilling the task repeatedly in the same way like ulang alik ulang seberapa boleh in most of the cases random practice produces better learning because the uh, variable practice uh, allows the child to solve a slightly distinct movement uh, problems every time and some of the main approaches that a therapist or interventionist apply in this practice model are giving verbal instructions uh, and demonstrating movement strategies now i'm coming to the conclusion of this topic uh, researchers have admitted that learning uh, takes place only when there's evidence or proof that a child's ability to respond to movement issue undergoes changes new motor skill learning needs to be evaluated through tests of retention and transfer not just immediate changes in performances uh, hence uh, therapists who apply uh, motor learning practice models will create opportunities or chances for a child to showcase their learning in three different settings which is retention transfer or generalization settings occupational therapists uh, or interventionists usually use motor learning theories to promote progress in areas of functions that involves learning complex skills and behaviors and my reference for this topic is a book uh, called occupational therapy for children 6th edition from pages 40 to 42 and thank you very much and hope to see you soon and salam to everyone